And it was talking about here that we're in a spiritual battle. We're not fighting flesh and blood. Can you say amen? amen. You, know, you know, one of the things that, that, that was, was reminding me of this today is that I was preaching a funeral, and I'm going to share some of the scriptures that I talked about at the funeral with you. But while I'm there, I'm, ta I'm talking about, and, and I'll, show you, I'll show you what I'm talking about here, that I, I opened with a couple of, of scriptures, but um, I said this to him, because it was a tragedy. It was a tragic death of a young man who was shot by police. And it said this, it said, I said, who's to blame for this tragedy? The cops, the drugs, the alcohol, the gangs, the parents, etc. We humans are always looking for somebody to blame. Okay, so let's place the blame on who is really responsible. And I went into John 10:10, 10, 10, said the thief comes not, but to kill or to steal, to kill and to destroy. Amen. But I but I preached a different way because I usually preach to the gang members of my testimony and I kind of just get real passionate. But I wanted, I really felt like the Lord said, I want you to teach these people because they keep dying. Because they're sitting there. They're sitting there and they're thinking, it ain't me, homie. Yeah. It ain't me that's going to be next. Yeah. You know what I mean? It ain't going to be my son next. Come on, who thinks it's going to be? Do you think Pam thought uh, at CJ's funeral is going to be her son next? And sitting there looking at your son in a coffin? How in the world can you do? How can you look at your child in a coffin? How do you even handle that? Who's to blame for that? The parents? Everybody blames the parents. Come on now, it's their fault. If they were good parents, then none of this would have... No, 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 because, because you got some messed up kids too. You come on now. You with me? I mean, I, me and my wife tried to raise our kids the best we knew how, but still, somehow we fell short. And our kids, some of them made some wrong choices in life. Who's to blame? The parents? I, 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 I you know what I mean? I take the blame for 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 anything. I, and I've even told my children. You know what I mean? Listen, I'm so sorry that I missed the mark somewhere. Somewhere it was my fault that I missed the mark. You know what I mean? And I've had him say, Dad, it wasn't your fault, it was our choice. Who's to blame? The cops? I told, I, you know, I was thinking, and you know what I mean? This is not popular, and I hope people don't take me wrong, but all I know is this. We were having a good service, talking about healing that morning. That yeah, God, Jesus is the healer. Come on now. You guys remember? Just two Sundays ago. Talking about Jesus is the healer. You know, people got healed in that service. There was a man that came in with a stroke that he couldn't even talk. His mouth was down, falling, and he couldn't even talk to me in the morning. And we prayed over him. We prayed for him. And I told God, God healed you, brother. And that evening, he came talking normal. He came Sunday again? Yeah. Man, he was talking like I'm talking. I mean, like nothing. They said, it's going to take you a long time to get your speech back. He's already talking normal. Yeah. God's a healer. But as we're having our healing service and talking about God and praise assembly is doing their thing and talking about the goodness of God and how awesome God is or whatever, somewhere there was something going on. Somewhere around, what, 11 or so or 10.30ish, there was a home invasion. You with me? And somebody was, you know, and this young man was in, supposedly involved in that. And which pursued a high-speed chase and ended up right down here, right by our church, just down the street. And, and there was a crash there and the running from the cops and, and supposedly this young man turned and fired and nine, or seven, seven police officers fired on him. Every single one of them fired on him. I mean, you know what I mean? And, 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 and so, you know, this tragedy, all I know is that... that I don't know what this young man was doing that day. I can assume, I can make a, probably a really good guess. Yeah. And, and usually home invasions aren't on people like you, yeah. who are nice, nice, nice family there, just minding your own business. It's usually on people that have a lot of drugs or, or burn somebody and owe them a lot of money. Yeah. Come on now. Right. People, you, you with me? Right. They're not just breaking in homes of nice 
people that you know just medium uh, uh, family finances and yeah. you know I mean there's, they're not breaking in there they're breaking in the homes of people who get arrested when they come into your home you know what I mean yeah. you got a warrant when they come into your home come on now yeah. You know, there's a reason they're there, and who knows what that reason was. But all I know is that, and I said it, that there was probably several cops in our city just just enjoying their job, maybe a, drinking some coffee or get a response to an invasion. Minding their own business, doing their job. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Who's to blame, the cops? I don't know. If you read the word, it says, you know, you, you don't have to fear the cops if you're not doing anything wrong. Right. These cops, I'm sure that they were doing their job and patrolling, having a cup of coffee, eating a donut, if you would, and got a call. There's an invasion. Back to work. We're at work, you know what I mean? Maybe, you know, I don't know what happened. I don't know what, entailed, what was entailed in all that, but I do know when they got to that place, they were firing on each other, and that young man died. Who's to blame? The parents? Maybe the parents were had bad lives, maybe the parents were on drugs, maybe the parents, you know, who, who knows? We always want to blame somebody. You know that people have blamed you for the way your children are? They blame me. I've had pastors say, if he can't take care of his own son, well, how can he, how's he going to pastor in the church in the city? You with me? And that's heavy duty. You know, especially when their kids are jacked up. How are you pointing fingers, man? You with me? Why don't we pray for each other? Why are you pointing fingers talking to your congregation about me? You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, so who do we, do we blame the parents? Do we blame the cops? Do we blame the drugs? Because if they weren't on drugs, they probably wouldn't have done what they were doing. Do we blame the booze? Maybe they were drunk. You with me? Do we blame, uh, you know, the gangs that they were involved in? Come on now. Huh? Come on now, I, when I got shot, I wasn't some productive citizen. I wasn't some, some person that the community looked up to and said, now that's, a, that's an awesome young man. This young man that died today, or that we buried today, they were saying so many positive things about him. He was a boxer, I didn't know that. They said he was good too. He loved to work out, he surfed, I mean, a, a water ski. You with me? He, he, he snowboarded, he did all this stuff. He was an athlete, and he was, you know what I mean, and all this stuff, and it's like, wow, how can, how can the, you know what I mean, somebody like that turn into a gang member, turn into, you know, just to run for a track, run from the cops, and you know what I mean, how, how does it happen? Does it just happen because you're in a bad lifestyle? Bad parents, bad family? I said, I was raised in a family, all we did was drink and drug. I know you guys weren't, but I was. Come on now. Some of you don't even want to tell the secrets and the maranadas of your family. Come on now. Not trying to offend you. Just trying to be real here. A lot of times we come as Christians to church and we act like, man, we our poop don't stink. We act like we're all righteous and religious and you, you got it all going on and, and all this. And, and it's not true. Every single one of us got a pass. Every single one of us got some skeletons in the closet that you don't want anybody to ever find out about. Who do we blame? Us? Do we blame ourselves? Or, you know what I mean? And I said, you know who to blame? Blame the devil, the real, the real, the one that's really responsible for all this. You know why? Because the Bible says that the devil is a murderer and has been since the beginning of time. He's a liar and the father of all lies. You with me? How many of you were good liars? You lie left and right, man. You lie to everybody, your husband, your wife, the boss, the kids, the pa your parent. I mean, no, no, I need, I need, I need 20 bucks, mom, for, for, you know, for the baby's diapers. Decimax and some. Come on, now. And you know what you're going to do with that $20. Yeah. And you were good liars. I was. Yeah. We all come from this kind of background. We all come from, but who's to blame? You with me? We're trying to blame the cops for arresting you. It's the cops' fault I'm in prison, is it? Or were they just doing their job like you do your job every day? Come on now. Who's, who's to blame? I know who's to blame. The devil's to blame. He's the murderer. He's a father of lies. 
He, you know what I mean? He, you know, are you with me? Yeah. He said he deceived the nations. The Bible said in Revelation 12, yeah. this one that deceived all the nations. Yeah. One day people are gonna look upon him and say, "This is him, Barney Fife, looking chump, skinny, 89 pound." Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Little sissy Lala Steve Urkel looking chump. <laughs> Deceived the nations. The lion that didn't even have no claws was old and, and had arthritis. And, and he couldn't even bite because he had no fangs or teeth. He just had a loud roar. And there was nothing about him but his, but his craftiness to put thoughts and to put lies in the hearts of God's people. Yeah, yeah. Who's going to take a young man and turn his heart and make him get involved with the gangs? Every one of those gang members, they're all good people. Yeah. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. I mean, we look here and say, man, they're thugs. They're just they're evil to the root. They're this and that. No, no, no. You were too. Yeah. Come on now. You were a sinner. Yeah. You were on your way to hell, just like them young gang members. I was one of those young men, and I know that I had good in me. I just was lost, man. I did some dumb things. I carried weapons. I carried guns. I hurt people. I, I, I hurt people with knives. I, you know what I mean? I hurt my own girlfriend, you know what I mean? Because I, I didn't understand who I was. I was lost. Who's to blame? You with me? The devil's to blame. And you know why I was bringing, when I was bringing that on, I, I, God had given me this whole, this whole sermon, this whole message for these people on today. He gave me this message. He started giving me the scriptures and all this. I put this together and I was thinking, I don't know, man. You know what I mean? Talking about the devil. We're talking about the devil and all these people in here. You know that there were so many drug addicts there? You know that they try and act like they're not an addict. Yeah. They try and be, yeah. you know, this is, you look at it, you're just like, my goodness, I'm, I'm blind, I can see you're a drug addict. Yeah. You know, family, you know what I mean? Uh, 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 you know, homeboy smelling of weed as they walked in. Drinking 40s. Yeah. You with me? And, 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 and many of them drug addicts, many of them drug dealers. And you know that in, in, in Galatians it talks about uh, 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 the works of the flesh that are going to send people to hell. One of them was witchcraft. There's a whole bunch of them there, and we probably fought, fought, fit in there, in there somewhere. But witchcraft was one of them. Come from the Greek word pharmakeia, which is pharmacy in our language. Them ph pharmaceutical drugs. Come on now, that 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 crack or that crystal meth. You, you remember, sister, the, 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 the witch over the cauldron yeah. that would stir her, yeah. stir her, her, I don't know what it was she was making. I think it was Jack and Jill or, or the little kids she put in there. Remember the little kids? Hansel and Gretel? So come over for dinner. They didn't know they were going to be dinner. And they're cooking that up. And as they cook their crystal meth, they cook their... Whatever it is, you know what I mean. They're there, and and, and, and there's and we even know we, we met them. We met a guy the uh, in this summer at the at the at the Riverwalk who was telling us stuff that he had got involved with himself. Now he's a born again Christian, ministering the word of God to people. But he was telling us what these even gang members were involved in. And I'm telling you, if if, if you understood the witchcraft and demon, demon worship involved. You wonder why heroin has such an addiction? You wonder why crack cocaine or crystal meth or even these pills, pharmacia? Why they have such an addiction on people who they, and, and you've looked at them and they're 50 years old. And they're all jacked up. You with me? Why can't they get off drugs? Why are they dying? Why are they going to their grave with, with cirrhosis and, 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 and their liver? They, you know, they're dying. And, and I talked to them today on dialysis. <laughs> what do you think's over all that stuff? I mean, could we blame the booze? We can. Maybe if we got rid of every liquor store, it'd be good. Well, maybe if we did shut down every drug dealer in, in, in America, our nation would be good. Come on now. 
Maybe if we, I mean, our nations are one that's saying, here, here, here's the pills. Yeah. Here. Yeah, yeah. Come on now, here's a prescription. Take them. Yeah, yeah. These will help you. Right. I don't know, we can't do nothing for your, for your wrist is fractured, but here's a thing of pills. Yeah. You with me? I don't know for your stomach cramps, but here's some pills. Yeah. Everything's here, pills, here's pills. You know why? They get paid for all that. Yeah. They get paid for pushing it on us, and we're just, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, right. And it's like, you know what I mean? Who's to blame for that? The doctor? He's just doing his job. I mean, he's thinking about money. You with me? Who's to blame? The drug dealer? He's thinking about money. Yeah. He's thinking about getting rich and, and making his. And You know what I mean? Yeah. He's thinking about buying homes for his family, too. Yeah, right. who, who do you think puts a woman out there to sell her beautiful precious body for money to men that are such pigs and gross and ugly. Who would do something like that? You, think, you don't think that's demonically influenced? Inspired? That, that, that a woman, the glory of God, the blessing of God that he gave a woman that would go lie down. I, I went one time to Northern Street, handing flyers, we were preaching the gospel, and, and, and right there at the Buff, no, not the buffalo. It's by the clamshell, but a little bit over this. In the middle of the block, there's an alley. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and we were walking by, and I seen this woman come. This man zipping his pants, and she's coming out. And, and I'm like, what the heck? What was she doing back there? Well, you know what she was doing back there? For what, 10 bucks? With some nasty cochino, stinky <laughs> man that, come on now. Yeah, Who do you think? You think that she just does it for the 10? Huh? Who's, in, who's behind all this stuff? Who's behind the gangs? Who's behind the colors? Who's behind the east side and west side and Norteños and Sureños? These guys are cooking this dope. And I'm telling you, gang members, that some of them big time that you guys know, that are doing stuff demonic and over the drugs and over the chanting and, 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 and cooking and, 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 and placing spells and stuff on this junk. Junk. Right. Right. And we don't, you know, nobody knows. Nobody, you know, see him today, all just jacked up on heroin. Right. I told him there is a way out. We're in a spiritual battle. We can't just, but you know what? If they want, that's their choice. If they want to go to hell, let them. No. I've already divided them to church. Uh. They don't want to hear about church. Right. They want to hear about Jesus. Right. They want to hear about a way out. They don't want to hear, everybody's inviting them to their church. Yeah. What's different about us? What's different about a Christian? What's different about a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness or a, or a Muslim or a Buddhist? What's different? Jesus is what's different. Right. Hmm? I got something, you with me, that you need. Right. Not, you know, I'll read the Bible. Well, you know what? Just go to church, you know. Well, just pray. How are you going to tell somebody like that to pray? How many of you prayed in that condition? You were in that condition, you were whatever you were, an addict, an alcoholic, a, you know, whatever it was. You know, you, how are you going to pray in that condition? Some of us can't even pray in the condition of salvation. How are you going to tell a drug addict, hey bro, just pray and ask God. That's why God saved you. God needs somebody like you. Amen. God needs somebody with the Holy Spirit. God needs somebody with some power. God needs somebody, come on, with a, with, with a, with a testimony of how he brought you out and what he's done for you. And with power in your hands in the name of Jesus, not my name, not Vince Diaz, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Devil, come out of them. Generational curse be broken. They need an answer. They need a way out. They don't need church. Right. They need Jesus. Right. Come on now. Right. You with me? Amen. They're doing their witchcraft. They're doing that. When I was saying, that, you just blame the real one. His name is uh, His name is the devil. His name is Lucifer. And I thought, man, I'm going to lose them here. Because they don't want to hear this. Especially the ones that, I, that, that were in the audience that were doing that stuff. That freaked me out. I said, man, they're, they're there. They're right there in the audience. 
They're people you know. You don't even know what they do. And they're worshiping the devil. They're going into stuff, witchcraft. I'm telling you, it would freak you out if you heard. They said that they wanted this individual to get involved in their witchcraft and stuff. And he wanted power. He wanted to. And they were saying, well, you got to come with us to a place that's, uh, 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 how do you say, like not restricted, but secluded. And we're going to go and we're going to party. And we're going to drink. We're going to smoke. We're going we're gonna, to, and one of the greatest things, one of the things you have to do to be a satanic, to be in the, in the, in the cult, one of the, one of the things you have to do as a male, is you have to have homosexual sex. Hmm. What does that have to do with me worshiping the devil? There's something about it that breaks, you know what I mean? That, that breaks a covenant with you and God. There's something about it that they know. Like Sodom and Gomorrah, man. Come on, man. God came to save them and they wanted to have sex with them. And there's something about it, taking these men that are getting involved with bad dudes and saying, you know what you need to do? You need to sleep with these men right here on the floor to be in this thing. Huh? Witchcraft? Sexual, all that stuff? The orgies and all that? You didn't know. That you, come on, pastors taught you on all that stuff. It lets witches, it lets demons in. That's why I don't understand how Christians can say it's all right. I'm gonna go run off and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go do what I'm gonna do anyway. But God will forgive me. They have no idea what they're talking about. They're walking in witchcraft, in deception. You with me? Amen. It's it's a trip, man. And we don't realize we're we're in a spiritual battle, man versus the devil. It has nothing to do with us fighting each other. Or are you with me? Who do you think is the reason that your family's uh, chaos, your family's fighting, yeah. your kids can't even get along. Yeah. What do you think's underneath all that? Right, yes. We've had dramas. We've shown you. They're here and they're doing whatever. We did our house and they're shooting dope and the family, the husband's beating the wife and the demons are right there laughing. What do you think's behind all that? Because yeah. that dude's a mean, mad, bad guy and he's just a, he's just a devil himself and, and he's good for nothing so he hit his wife and he ought to send him to prison or kill him. You don't even know what you're saying. Right. You've done some crazy stuff in your life yeah. that people probably looked at you and said you're worthless. Yeah. But God never gave up on you. Right. Never did. Yeah. Every one of these gang members, I don't care what they've done. I don't care if it's a drug addict in that place. Man, you know what I mean? I love them people. You know why? Because God loves them. Yeah. And I want to help them. Sometimes I just don't know how. <laughs> You with me? Amen. But it's like God loves every one of these people, and the devil has them bound. Yeah. Acts tells us, you know what? Go and turn them from darkness to light. Turn them from the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God. Right, you right. turn them. Right. Amen. You with me? Amen. Say about it. You know what I mean? Just you coming to be a next nice little Christian at church. God has so much more for you. I talk about being a world shaker and a history maker. And some of you, you're like, me? I can, have, I can help change a person's life from darkness to light? Yeah. From the kingdom of darkness right, to the kingdom of God. Right. From the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God. Yeah, you yeah. turn them, he said. You with me? They're, they're lost. They're bound, just like we were years, years ago, yeah. or some months ago. Yeah. We don't realize it's a spiritual battle. You know what I mean, Pastor? Listen, I mean, I know sometimes we come and we're, we're, we're at odds. You know what I mean? We, we don't like our pastor. We don't like our pastor's wife because we're at odds. We got this and that. You don't realize we're in a spiritual battle. There's something about, listen, the, the, the powers of darkness have principalities, powers, Rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's, a, that's their ranking. That's their demonic ranking. Even the demons, so, you don't know, submit to each other. Even the demons obey with the, the next stronger one. But not us Christians. Nobody's going to tell us what to do. Come on now. 
The demons fall in order. They fall in rankings. But you know, the angels fall in seraphims and cherubims and, 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 and principalities and, and thrones and, and all these different things. These were all angelic, uh, 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 what did I say? The rankings, the, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, levels of, of authority that these angels have. Demons have levels. They, we just see a few of them right there. Yeah. But not us. Right. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. You with me? We're not submitting to anybody. You know, oh, I submit to God. How do you submit to him if you can't even see him? Amen. And you can't submit to your husband? Amen. Come on now. Amen. Some of you that want to get married, especially some of you ladies in here want to get married, you got a long way to go because you're going to have to submit to that husband. Right. You with me? Right. You can't erase that from Ephesians 5. <laughs> you with me? Right. Man, you say, man, I better learn to submit to my pastors because I'll never get a husband this way. You with me? And, and we're easy. We're not harsh. Like, you know what I mean? We could be really mean and harsh, and we're not. You with me? But, but, but even the demons have rankings. The demons submit to authority. You with me? Amen. I talked to somebody today, you know, or yesterday, who wanted to participate or be involved in the thing, and then he started telling me his Vietnam stuff, and then that he is a man that understands the chain of command, and whatever I say, and he did, he did. I said, man, this man, he, you know, he's like that one, that one centurion's, yeah. oh, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. where his servant was sitting. He said, I understand authority. You say to that, you know, you know, to say the word, and my servant will be healed. He was the same way. He was like, you just tell me what to say, tell me what to do, how much time do I and I'm done. And he did. He did what he said he's going to do. I said, that's a man under authority. As crazy as he was or whatever, he understood authority. You with me? And there's something about that. You with me? That, 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 you know what I mean? But, but we're wrestling against these. Then we're rankings of the enemy. You know what I mean? The enemy has his strategic order. You with me? And, and, and some are just imps and some are just little stuff that usually the ones that bug us. Yeah, that's right. You know, the devil's after me. The devil wouldn't waste his time with you. That's right. Amen. The devil wouldn't waste his, his, right. his a minute with you. Yeah, right. And the devil can only be one place at one time. Right. Why would he be at your house? That's right. Come on. Are you that important? Yeah. That the devil himself has come to you? I mean, Jesus was. Jesus fasted 40 days, though, and then the devil came when he was really, really weak. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You think the devil covered the devil? He, he appeared to me. <laughs> it was that burrito, man. Yeah. It was that burrito you ate. <laughs> I hear people say it all the time, man, that, well, you know, the devil said this, the devil, stop listening to him. I said, man, I have enough problems with people that are saying, God spoke to me. I'm like, oh dear Lord, are they serious? They think that's God. But they tell me that he said that. So, you know what I mean? What am I going to do? And tell them, you're, you don't even know what you're talking about. Right. Oh, God spoke to me and he appeared to me. He told me to read this scripture and all this. And it's like, well, praise the Lord, read the scripture. But, you know, <laughs> people are a trip, man. Yeah. Oh, God, help us. Amen. Let me read you some of the stuff I had. I had Ephesians 6. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 3, and 4, it said, we, don't, we no longer war after the flesh. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Our weapons are not AK-47s, 9 millimeters, machetes. Amen? Our, our weapons are not, are not frying pans. Although I've seen a lady hit her husband with a frying pan and he got saved, God can use that. <laughs> her husband used to beat her for many, many years. And finally she got tired and talked to the pastor and, 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 she, and the pastor said, man, you know, you're going to have to just let him have it. And she, she, she got a pan one night and he came at her and she just hit him. Bam! In the name of Jesus. And he went down. And when he got up, he wanted to pray the prayer of salvation. Amen. And he gave his life to Jesus. The pastor said, man, you should have hit him a long time ago. Should have helped him out there. 
but our weapons are not flesh and we're not fighting flesh and blood. They're not they're not carnal. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You know what strongholds have to deal with? Strongholds have to deal with with things in your mind that are strong that are that are have control over you. You could come to church. Remember the elephant story? That elephant wouldn't leave anywhere because in his mind he had a stronghold. You with me? That woman, I tell the story of the lady who, 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 her husband would come home and every time she'd make a big meatloaf and, and then, you know what I mean, she had a pan and everything, but she'd make the meatloaf and then she'd cut a good quarter off this and a quarter off this and throw the, throw the thing away. You know what I mean? Throw the rest away. And her husband said, why do you do that? Why the waste? And she said, I don't know, honey, my, my mom did it that way. And, and, and so she said, well, I'm going to ask my, you know, my mom why she does that. And, and the mom says, uh, she said, Mom, why do you cut the, the ends off the meatloaf and waste all that meat and stuff? And she says, well, I don't know. Grandma did that. <laughs> and they called Grandma because they were both curious. And they said, Grandma, why do you cut the ends off the meatloaf like that? That's a waste. And Grandma said, oh, it's because my pan was only that big. <laughs> And so she seen her do that, so she would go make hers and cut her hands off and put it in a big pan and cook it. Then she passed it on to her daughter. And what was it? It was just a stronghold. They didn't even understand what it was about. So, you know what I mean? Some of us got strongholds with an attitude. <laughs> and you look and you, you know, and sometimes you get to get around family members and stuff, mom and auntie and grandma and stuff, and you see that, and you're like, oh, stronghold. Now I know where it comes from. Come on now. How many of you have ever said, I'll never be like my mom? Or you guys that are here, I'll never be like my dad, man, and blah, blah, blah. And you're just like him. Huh? You say, oh, dear Lord, I think I've become him. Strongholds. But, but you know what we ought to be saying one of these days? I'm going to be like Jesus. Amen. One of these days, by His grace and mercy, I'm going to be like Jesus. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow morning. But I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm not who I want, or what I want to be, but thank God I'm not who I used to be. And we're getting there. We're getting there. We're, we're serving the Lord. We're getting better every day. Not only physically, but mentally and emotionally. There's some stuff in your emotions that God has to break down. There's some stuff that God has to build up. Self-esteem, courage, boldness, confidence. To where you're able to say, I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. I can be, I am who God says I am. I have what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. Why? Because I'm like Him. You with me? I'm no longer like my earthly father. I'm no longer like my earthly mother. I'm no longer like this person or that person. I'm getting more like Him. Amen. More like Christ every day. That's, that ought to be our goal. But we're in a spiritual battle. Um, for the, well, maybe for the sake of time, I'll, I'll read it. Luke, t- chap, uh, no, actually go to Mark. Mark 5. Luke, Luke was talking about, let's go to Luke first. Luke chapter 10. And I'm going to tell you what to read real quick, Al. And then we'll go to Mark 5, okay? Luke chapter 10, verse 1 through 3. We'll read a few verses, but 1 through 3 for right now. The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places he planned to visit. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into the fields. Now go and remember that I am sending you out as lambs lambs among wolves. Wait a minute, stay right there. He says... He sends the 72 out. He tells them, go. You know what I mean? This is what I want you to do. He says, uh, uh, um, uh, the harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. He starts telling them a story. The harvest is, is huge, but we only got a few workers. Pray then that the Lord would send forth laborers. Now go. He sends, you know what I mean? Because we pray, oh Lord, send them, Lord. Send laborers, God. <laughs> Amen. 
and we go home. And God says, you know what? Not only pray for labor is more help, but you go. You go and you preach that gospel out there. And you, you with me? Yeah, to the places that I tell you to go. Now read verse number 9. Hell. Oh. Slipping here. So he's preaching out there, tells them, hey, as you go heal the sick and tell them this, the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is at hand. You with me? See, he sends them out. He says, when you go out there, heal them. He sent the 72. So he's telling you this too. So this is your instructions tonight. Verse 1 through 3, verse 9, and then verse 17 through 19. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Yes, he told them, I saw, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority over all power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. Amen. Verse 19 said what? Look, I have given you authority over all power of the enemy. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Okay, hold on. I don't know what translation you have. I have, behold, I give unto you power to trample or to tread on serpents and scorpions. He says, and, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Amen. Nothing is going to hurt you. He said, I give you authority over demons. That's right. You understand that? Amen. You understand that there's nothing to fear? Yep. You with me? Yep. These people that are walking in witchcraft, these people that are praying over this crack, over this meth, over this whatever it is they're cooking up. You with me? Yep. They're using the devil's power in that junk. Yep. That's why it's called witchcraft. You with me? It's not called witchcraft just because, you know, because I've heard people say it. You know, somebody told me yesterday, oh no, this month they got today, weed for you guys that don't understand that, this weed is killer, brother. Man, it picks me up. I always, you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm from the 80s. I'm smoking the, just the plant. And I'm getting stoned and laughing and hungry. And they said, oh no, but Pastor, this stuff is not like that. Because yeah. it's they're chemically induced. It's chemically, yeah. you with me, influenced. There's a lot of stuff they're doing to this stuff. And it all, you know what I mean? It ain't yeah. just the herb. Well, God gave us every seed-bearing herb, Pastor. For, yeah, but to eat, it says it. Read it. To eat. Yeah. And you can't even say that because they said, well, then, then I can make brownies. Yeah. <laughs> And, and you know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe in victims that are dying, maybe in victims, and I've known cancer victims that have taken medical marijuana to help them ease them through their death. You with me? Come on, maybe yeah. that would be understandable. Come on now. Yeah. But because you're, you don't got a headache or you're going to smoke some stuff that's going to get you uh, all ready to go and this and that, it sounded like it was meant to me. It's not like it was something that picks you up. Like, man, work, 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 work good. Work hard, work fast. And it was like, it, it doesn't sound like the same stuff I had in the 80s, bro. Right. It's, right. it's something different. It's influenced by the devil. It's yeah. influenced by yeah. demons. Yeah. And our nation, or our city, has, or our, our, our state has legalized it. Right. And now everybody, I seen a viejita that one day, man, she was rejoicing because of something she heard about weed. And I looked back. I thought, my goodness, you, she was like a 10-year-old kid that got a joint. Yeah. I thought, wow, that's a trip. Yeah. And everybody accepts it, man. It's yeah. a trip, man. Yeah. We accept anything. Yeah, right. Anything demonic, anything that doesn't have to, anything that pulls us from God, yeah. we'll go ahead and accept it. Yeah. You with me? Compromising our principles. Exactly. Mark chapter 5. We'll read this and then... Uh, I got just one more scripture after that. Mark 5, 1 through 20. Read that out. Yeah, read it real loud though. So they arrived at the other side of the lake <coughs> in the region of Jerusalem. Jer 
When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from the cemetery to meet him. This man lived among the burial caves and could no longer be restrained, even with the chain. Whenever he put, he was put into chains and shackles, as he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrist and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue, subdue him. Day and night he wandered among the burial graves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. When Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him, and bowed low before him. With a shriek, he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In the name of God, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already said to the spirit, Come out of the man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus demanded, What is your name? And he replied, My name is Legion, because there are many of us inside this man. Then the evil spirits begged him again and again not to send them to some distant place. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby. Send us into those pigs, the spirits begged. Let us enter them. So Jesus gave them permission. The evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the entire herd of about 2,000 pigs plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. Okay, we're going to stop right there. Thank you. Um, um, what happened here was there was a man, one man. There, actually, there was two. Pastor preached it the other night. There was two men in Luke chapter, I think it was five or something, tells the story. There was two men. But for some reason, uh, Mark focused on this one man that happened, that had uh, one legion of demons inside of him, which is, if you look it up, a legion is, is, is usually a thousand, but it can be from 1,000 to 6,000 demons inside one man. And this man was would cry and run the, they, they couldn't even hold him, he was like the Yorona, you know what I mean? Running the, the, the mountains and, and living in the tombs. How many of you, did? Uh, let me just ask you this, did any of you ever go partying in the, t in the, in the graveyards? Just a few, <laughs> what were you doing out there, getting all low and high or anything with the grave? See, you were like this man. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. This man was out there in the tombs, he was lost, he was crying, he would scream at night, and he would cut himself. You ever heard of people that cut themselves? Yeah. Huh? What do you think it is? They say it's pain. They say they're trying to get it out, and they cut themselves, and they hurt, because they're angry, they're, they're whatever, you know what I mean? I believe, you know what I mean? Not that they're just demon-possessed, but there's a demon influence there. Yeah. Who's going who's gonna to have you cut yourself? How many of you cut yourself or, you know what I mean, uh, scrape tattoos in you and, and razor blades and all this different stuff just because you're dumb? Yeah. I did? Yeah. Dumb? Yeah. You, <laughs> Lord, help us. I feel, I feel like I'm this man here. But when Jesus appeared on the land, this man that was, was not even chains could hold him. It said that he ran to Jesus and he worshipped him. He didn't run to Jesus and start singing, Worship the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. Worship Jesus. The second one, see, he was harmony. Worship the Lamb. There was a duo. To worship the Lord means to bow. To bow before him. Whenever a king came into the room, or you came into the presence of a king, you've seen the movies. What do you do? You bow. Wow. Saying, I submit to your authority. I, you know what I mean? You are my Lord. You're my King. He bowed, and, and, and then he started saying stuff like, it said that he shrieked with a loud voice and said, why have you, have you come to torment us? I know who you are. I pray you in God's name that you let us go into these pigs. Don't send us away from this territory. There's something about land that demons like to stick around a certain part of, of land or a certain familiar place. Yeah. They say, whatever, I beg you in God's name, don't send us from this certain area here. If you anything, send us into those pigs. You with me? Because yeah. Jesus had already told him, come out of him. And they're like, Babe, please, please, don't send us away. I know who you are, son of God. We beg you in God's name, don't send us from this. We, we're familiar with Pueblo, I mean, with this place. Yeah. Come on, now. Right. 
right. You know Pueblo has familiar spirits. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You go to different cities, you go to Spring Springs, it's totally different. I don't like Spring Springs. Springs is different for me because it's a, a, a it's a military town. It's a you know they, they got the black, the white, the Chinese, the everybody, and they're all, they're all like you know working and stuff like that. You know what I mean? They're military. They're they're walking around in, in their suits and they're it's just a different feel. Denver's different than that. But Pueblo, everybody's like, oh man, I I, I got to get out of Pueblo. Pueblo's just, you know how it is. They've, they've come and they've sat with me right here. And my heart is broken because they're saying, Pastor, I'm a drug addict. I'm a heroin addict and I don't know what to do. I need help, but I don't want to leave the Denver to go home. What do I do? I don't know what to do. Pastor, I go to my grandma's house and there's dope there. I go to my girlfriend's house and there's dope there. We go to her mom's and there's dope there. We go to a friend's house and there's dope there. We go over here and there's heroin there and people giving it to us and people, give, you know, this and that. And I'm like, well, what in the world do, do we do, God? Give me wisdom. Help me to help them. Yeah. I don't know what to do. Right. i got to pray. God, help us. Give us winning inventions and great ideas how to win heroin, to buy to win heroin addicts. Right. To help them. To cast the devil out of them. Yeah. You with me? To come, but you gotta understand it's all in it's all in, in, in their willingness and it's all in God's timing. Right. Yes. You with me? Yeah. That demon possessed man had an ounce of hope and ran to Jesus, man, and threw himself down. I haven't had one of these heroin addicts come and drop before me and say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Usually they're like, No, I'm I'm good. Yeah. yeah. I'm good, it's all good. No, 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 I'm alright. I don't need no home. I'm not that bad. I'm not that bad. I'm not a drug addict. I don't need it every day. I don't know. And, and, and you know what I know? I know that they're an addict because they said that out of their mouth. Yeah, I'm not that bad. I know immediately yeah. you're an addict. Yeah. Because every addict is denying yeah. that. No, 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 no. I'm good. Yeah. I just got, you know, once in a while. But I work. I do this. I do that. It's like you're an addict. Yeah. You're like this man here. You know what I mean? He says, you know what, I know who you are, but please don't send us away from you Pueblo. We don't want to go to Denver. Why? Because we know everybody. That's why it's so hard for me to say, let's start a home like next door or anywhere here. I would have to literally start a home in Manzanola or La Hanna or Rocky Ford or, or even Avondale to, 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 to get them people out of this familiar place. Because they know everybody they go right down the alley, right here or over here or anywhere and get their drugs. They know everybody. It's there. The devil's everywhere. Yeah, but he's not here. Amen. You with me? Amen. And this, the, you know what I mean? And, and, and the story goes on to say that, that after he cast the, the, devils out, the devils out of this man, that the farmers, they ran because they, they're, all their pigs ran into the sea. They were mad. They cast, They wanted Jesus out of their country. Yeah. They hated him because he made because of them. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't care when they walked up that the man that was demon possessed they couldn't they couldn't even go by him. You know, I mean, they look and they, they see him. He was naked in the tombs. When they seen him, he was in clothes, yeah. seated with his legs crossed, <laughs> and in his right mind, it's like, hey, how you doing, guys? How you doing? And freaked them out. Yeah. You with me? Because they were like, who in the world is this man? You know what they told Jesus? They went, Lord, 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 we want to receive you. Please come into our hearts too, right? No. no. No, they told him, you know what? You get out of our country. You get out of here. We don't want nothing to do with you, Jesus. Could you imagine that? You know how many people have told us that in Pueblo? Yeah. You with me? You know how many people would love it if we would move from this city? Say, man, I wish that church wasn't there on 10th and Troy. Right. I wish they would just, I wish Vince and Susan would just leave. Huh? You know, the devil would love that too? Yeah. Huh? I wish they would just leave and, 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 and leave this city for me to have my way with it. Well, devil, you're not going to have your way. Amen. Amen. The devil's not going to win. Amen. Amen. I like what it said in Luke 10, 19. We just read it. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon ser uh, 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 serpents and scorpions and, uh, and over power over all. 
Amen. All the powers of the enemy. Yeah, that's right. And nothing, nothing shall by any means Man. harm Man. you. Man. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Hmm? Right. In Matthew chapter Matthew chapter one, he sent out his twelve disciples, and he said that he gave them power and authority oh, uh, against unclean spirits to cast them out. Right. Amen. Right. We must attend, or or we must. See if I can read my own writing. We must all, uh, oh, we must attend wrestling practice. Is that if we're if we're to be victorious over uh, the enemy, Amen? How do we do that? Prayer. Right. Wrestling practice is prayer. I don't know if you've ever wrestled. I used to wrestle in high school, and I hated it because wrestling practice was work. Work, and I had state champions body slam me and stuff like that. Yep. I thought, no, nah, this ain't fun. I don't like this, so I quit. I said, oh no, I'm not gonna come in. But you know what I mean? Practice. That's what prayer is. Prayer is coming. How do we war against the enemy? How do we bind the enemy? How do we win back our, 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 our community? It's not by just saying, hey, you're going to hell. That'll get you punched in the nose. It's by saying, you know what, God, we need your help. We need your help, Lord. We can't do it alone. We can't do it alone. Amen? Understand we're in a spiritual battle tonight. Amen. Let me read you just some of the ones that I have here that I gave them. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes not but to kill, steal, and destroy. Uh, John 8.44 says the devil is a murderer since the beginning and the father of lies. 1 Peter 5.8 says the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, kill, or destroy. Amen. That's, that's what I talked to him today about. I told him, you know who's to blame for this tragedy? I just, I just buried one of our other homies yeah. two months ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I asked him a question. I asked him, who's going to be next? Which one of you homeboys are going to be next? And I said that today, and I don't know if I should have said that because I kind of got some looks. Yeah. But it's who's going to be next? <coughs> It don't have to be you, because that's where I spun it on him. I told him, you know, all that stuff about that dirty devil, who's the problem, who, who, who's the real blame. But I said, but there's hope. There is a way out. There's still time to flip a U-turn. It's not too late for you. What is the way out? Jesus. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Watch this one. This one was one of my favorites. 1 John 3, 8. says, For this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Amen. Only Jesus can de destroy the devil's power over your life. Right. We can't do it alone. Right. They can't do it alone. Amen. They need you. Right, they need you to pump it up. Yep. To get into your Bible and read and study it. To show yourself approved a workman worthy of his hire, able to divide the word of truth. Amen. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying and getting strong so you can be that mouthpiece for God out there in the world. Right. You with me? Amen. They need you. Right. I told them, blood in, blood out, homie. It took your blood to get you in. Only his blood can get you out. Will you accept Jesus, God's way out today? The second half of John 10, 10 said, But Jesus, but I, Jesus, have come that they might have life and have life more abundantly. Amen. And I just asked him to pray with me today. Make the U-turn. Flip that U-E today. Start your new life today. Amen. Jesus is Pueblo's only hope. I believe this with all my heart. Jesus is Pueblo's only hope. He's your only hope of a truly abundant life. Amen? Amen. That's what I told them. 
Amen. But he's the real, the devil's the real culprit. He's the real person to blame. Anything that you can think of, blame him. Yeah. He's the one under everything that's, that's causing all this stuff. Strife, he's causing it. Divorce, he loves it. Yeah. That's his number one thing right yeah. there. Yep. His number one thing is divorce. Right. He hates the family. So if you, I mean, if you're married and you're having struggles and fighting and this and that, I can, I can guarantee you that Satan's behind it. And he won't be happy until you're d divorced and destroyed. You know why? Because he's not necessarily after you to destroy you. He wants those kids. And if he can destroy your marriage, he'll destroy your children. People say, well, now our kids are resilient. They'll fall back. Well, how many of you come from divorced homes? And you say, you know what? That was the hardest part of my life. Yeah. And your relationships have suffered as a result of that. Right, amen. Huh? Amen. 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 But how many know God? And God that was God's amen. first... Amen. You know what I mean? Right. That was, I don't know what you call it. An institution. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Before he gave him a wife, he gave him a job. Right. Did ladies hear that? Yeah. Man never comes up. You know, like she wants to date you. This and that. I say, hey, where are you work? Oh no, see what happened was I'm between jobs now. I just say, okay, ladies. Hasta la vista. Not in all situations, but in most. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. But anyway, stand with me this evening. I mean, no, we're in that spiritual battle. But we have the victory. When we have God on our side, man, alive. See, you are, that, that ought to make you happy. You ought to be like, man, God saved me. God delivered me from all that stuff. And God gives you understanding now. Amen. Amen. See, with that understanding that I just shared with you and just the messages we've been sharing and stuff, you can go, that's what you're supposed to do. Right. Is take that knowledge and go out there and change the world. Right. You're supposed to go out there and be able to share with your family what you've heard here. Right. You with me? Yeah. And say, not only that, but that's why I say, take notes. Mark your Bibles up. This way you can go and you can say, oh, you know what, this is what, look what Pastor was showing us the other night, read that for yourself. Yeah. 